be televised the revolution will be streamed live all right you guys what's up welcome everybody to a new episode of critical and thinking with ty barnett annie and harris what's going on we're live again we're live again uh we're gonna perfect this fucking thing (laughs) of going live and live we gotta it puts pressure on us but it's good pressure because it makes us have to stay focused speaking of focus we got a great guest we got a vince Vince cachero folks this is a mma fighter just fought last night for lfa legacy fighting uh uh, alliance alliance yeah alliance Uh, (laughs) you better get that shit right he is undefeated he will knock the shit out of you (laughs) vince cachero um thank you yes what's up guys yeah welcome bro welcome welcome uh So, so background um some because a lot of people will just know me and ty i'm you know from comedy and and ranting about uh political nonsense on here but yeah. um so i also have a gym and uh been working with training fighters for a long ass time and vince's uh six years now huh we've been together i mean i started fighting in 2013 so we've Whoa. been together since 2012 12, yeah. yeah so six yeah, years six years six years so um, yeah, and he just had his sixth pro fight. Undefeated. Yeah, undefeated. Under six and oh. Now let me ask you something, man, because I, I've never like I, I, I watch it. Let me I always tell Ian the craziest thing I ever seen in MMA was the first promo I saw for it was a slow motion promo. They were playing opera music in the background, <laughs> right? And the dude you and I was like, oh, what's this? And it's just a bunch of slow motion fighting, and you see the dude get hit in the jaw, and then you see a tooth just fucking fly out of his mouth. <laughs> And I was sitting there thinking, man, this is cool to watch. But for me, if that was him, like the fight would have been over right there. All right, we're done. We're good. So let me ask you something. Being 6-0, and is there a chip on your shoulder? Like, do you have a, come on, there's got to be a little bit of a like, all right, nobody's fucking with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you need to have that in order to be successful in anything you do. Right, right, right. So I if, you're, you. if you're undefeated, you have that chip on your shoulder, but you got to have that humility still that that sense of I still got to keep working. You know, there's still more okay. work to be done in order to reach the top. All right, we we so had, had a, that chip still, but we had a wrestler mm-hmm. on. Yeah. We had a wrestler on not too long ago from WWE. He knows her. He oh, train with her. Oh, Derek? cool. We still training at Derry. Yeah. So yeah. we 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 asked Derry. Said, "Hey, is there are there anybody is there anybody from your past that you know that you would see now that you're like, yeah, if I ever run across you again, this is gonna be a different situation." <laughs> Do you, do you have those people? You don't have to tell us who it is, but do you have a list, a mental list? I mean, yeah, everyone, everyone's running through those, whether it's <laughs> it's just sparring or guys you fought or guys who are talking shit online. Nobody that you took know. your lunch money that you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah, right, I got you now, bro. Yeah, well, back in those days, you know, I was like, I was the complete opposite of what I am now. I wasn't a fighter. I would say, you know, outside of the ring, I'm pretty pretty quiet pretty shy introverted right right i'm not this this guy out looking for fights i've actually never even been in a street fight even though i'm I'm from hawaii which is scrapping state everyone's fighting out there and i've been around fights but i haven't actually thrown blows in a street fight. oh so getting into the cage was i guess for me that time to tap in wait wait so so (laughs) right there on the floor ian um the power cord shit oh okay all right, so wait, wait. So you've never been in an actual street fight? I've been like a part of them, but not holding people down or throwing punches or anything. Oh wow, wow, <laughs> that's got to be crazy. So because uh, I, I again, uh, everyone like I've gone to Ian's gym a few times, mm-hmm. and whenever I'm there, I'm always like, man, maybe I should take some classes and and kind of get into this. And then I get winded when I run across the street, and I was like, ah, that's probably not for me. <laughs> this, is, this is probably not my thing. The closest thing for me is those boxing games. And even those boxing games take a lot out of me because you got you know what it is is holding your holding your arms up. I actually went to Ian's house when we watched uh, McGregor and uh, Mayweather, right? Mm. And people were taking bets and stuff like that, talking about what would happen. And I was telling somebody, I said, "Man, McGregor may know how to fight, like fight, fight like that." But I said, "The longer this fight goes, the harder it's going to be for him." And sure enough, as we watched the fight, those arms got heavy. And heavier and heavier. So how long did it take you to build up your endurance? Because again, you say you had never had a street fight. How long did it take you to build up your endurance 
to 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 go the entire you know. Well, I've always been an athlete, so I played soccer growing up. So I had I had a good gas tank, but grappling and fighting, striking, it's, a it's thing. yeah, it's a completely different okay. type of endurance system. So I would say, you know, last night or on Friday night, it was the best that I've been yeah, endurance Friday. wise. So you could say I've been building that up for the last six okay. years. Okay. And, and, and every camp, every camp, you got to start not over from ground zero, mm -hmm. but you can't jump into a three round or five round fight um, on day one of a camp. You get your ass kicked. You yeah. Ass out. So it's that eight weeks or however many weeks they they give you. I'd say he, he could probably get his cardio to fight level within, I would say, a couple of weeks if he goes really, wow. really hard. Yeah. But it's a lot of sprinting and, and See, you know, that kind of that's stuff. the thing. Like, like people don't understand. Like, I, I always, <laughs> when, when I was in my prime of working out, like, I used to be like a workout warrior. Like, I had the six-pack, and I was, I was... That's why I get mad at Facebook sometimes when they send you those fucking reminders. So remember how you used to look? Yeah, like, yeah I, I do. Stop I do. sending me those, Facebook. <laughs> stop sending me those, especially while I'm eating donuts. <laughs> but like those, like I was ripped up, but like I would be on the treadmill with with dumbbells. Like, you know, and people would be looking at me like, oh man, either he's training for something or he has issues. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which it was actually a little bit of You're both. training for your issues. <laughs> exactly. But I I realized something. Because I was, I would run on a treadmill, and no matter how much I ran on the treadmill, when I'm running on the street, that shit's way different. Mm -hmm, right. So, do you have to, like, what do you, what do you, what do you do specifically to build up your cardio to to go like that? I mean, specifically for cardio, you have our our trainings where we're wrestling, we're grappling, we're doing MMA stuff. So already that's building your endurance, right. but building more of that that pure cardio, I would say, is is the sprints. So I'll do <laughs> sprint workouts either on the treadmill. We'll do our, yeah. our one minute. Right. On one minute off in terms of like kind of jogging fast and then sprinting. And then I've also been doing sprints uh, at the track with one of my other coaches. Oh, wow. And and that really will just push your, your cardio and, and more so recovery to the next yeah. level. Because you have that minute yeah. in between rounds to kind of get your breath back again and recover. And I felt that with this last fight too, especially going into the third round as a three round fight. I was still there and he... He was starting to he gas, gas out. out yeah. And you can say, what's the look, what's the look you see? I don't want to give away all your secrets. <laughs> what's the look that you see on somebody's face to let you know, all right, th this might be me. I got this. All the blood. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you know, it, 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 it's, it's he broke it down to basics. It, when I see blood, that's pretty much it's, it. It's funny too, though. You asked a question about cardio because um, I think that you have to do both like treadmill and track. Right. And the reason, the problem, the problem I have with like, people say, oh, isn't the track much harder? The track is definitely harder. If there's somebody keeping you honest, the problem with the track is like people go and they'll do, and if they're not keeping themselves honest, or if there's not a coach, they're keeping them honest. You don't know how fast you're running on a track. Right. So you can slow yourself down. If you're not like, Oh, I just did a 400 in, in 56 seconds. Next time I got to do it in 56 seconds. If you're not keeping track of that, then next time you might do it in 58 seconds. But on uh -huh. a treadmill, you set it for 12 miles an hour. You've got a minute. Okay. If you, if you go at 11 miles an hour, you're in the wall, right? That's throwing you off. So treadmill, I think, is is better if you got if you're on your own, mm -hmm. or, or you have any sort of problems with braking mentally. Turn that on, and at whatever rate you have to go, and you can't stop. And if you put your hands down, you know you cheated. Whereas sometimes when you're uh, on the track, you, you well, I don't. Cheat, I cheat a lot on the track. Exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. But, but if you have someone keeping you honest, pushing yourself around a track is is obviously harder. Right, right, right. As I, long yeah. as you're keeping yourself at that st at that pace. You listening to this, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> but um. But it's funny because you see guys break sometimes. Our gym is kind of we we do that a lot. Like we the way we attack people, like we have a lot of a lot of fights in our, you know, with all the people we have on our on our gym in our gym that have fought. We see guys break and girls all the time. Mm -hmm. And you and and it's partly because of the the pressure we put on, striking, grappling, you know, all the different targets. A lot of the body, a, a lot of MMA guys don't they don't throw jabs. Right. They don't throw body shots. They they are very Muay Thai. We we try to we've always tried more of a a, um, a boxing base where we have a lot of jab, jabbing and a lot of a lot of body shots, and that breaks people mentally. And there's moments where you see people look at their corner sometimes, mm -hmm. like, like "Get me the fuck out of here." Yeah, or like, or like <laughs> you didn't tell what me about this do? shit. <laughs> what do I do about this? Oh. And and then to me, that's that's as a coach, sometimes it's fun to like. There's been several fights where I've said something, and the fighter looked at me like. Hey, fuck you, man. Like, I'm like, hey, he's breaking. And the fighter looks over like, That's right. I am? Yeah, 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 you're breaking. And then look at the coach. Am I breaking? It's like, the no, closest the, the closest I've come to even anything like that, I remember I was playing ball. This is when I used to hoop 
a lot, and I was actually in pre. I was actually in, my cardio was okay because I, I always prided myself on playing defense. And I remember I was going. I was somebody set a screen like a pick, and I ran full force into the pick, and I ran right into the dude's body. And I can't even tell you the sound that came out of my mouth. My, 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 <laughs> it was like I, it was a combination. It wasn't feminine, but I can tell you right now for sure. It was like I'd never made that sound before. Like, oh, <laughs> and and I'm telling you at the moment. The adrenaline's going, but like I knew I'd felt it. Like I'd felt right. that. But, and so I'm still, I got to finish the game. Let's finish the game. The next day, bro, all, the whole side of my body was just felt rocked. And I'm like, oh man, this adrenaline must have got me through it. But when you get hit like that, like where have you gotten hit in your body to where you just like, okay, I'm definitely going to feel this shit tomorrow or in about 15 minutes. Man, in fights... You know, I haven't been put away or anything yet, obviously, so I, I haven't been knocked uh, out. See that subtle brag? <laughs> haven't been not put away yet, just so you guys know I'm still undefeated, bitches. <laughs> just so you know. Six and up. So in fights, in fights, nothing really. Like, the ones that actually put you on your ass, because I have been sat down a few times. You know, those shots you don't really feel. You, you see them at the last second, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> and then it's like, boom, flash, my butt's on the ground, and I'm back up. And okay, okay. Again. So you, you actually don't feel as that much. The ones that hurt the most, actually, like from this past fight, was me kicking the dude's shin with my foot. Shin, my, oh. my ankle was already sprained. I hit with the wrong part. You're supposed to hit with your own shin, and so it's my foot just oh, connecting with his shin. And, no, yeah, yeah. see, you I told the you. The, the worst is when you throw a kick and someone blocks it with the point of the elbow, see, and it hits right. You guys in seeing between all of this pain us. we're talking about? <laughs> but the thing is that that, that uh, yeah, he hasn't. Um, I haven't. Seen, is that yours volume? That's me. Oh, yeah, that's me. Go. Shit, I'm like, what is that? Uh, um, it, the, this is how unorganized we are, yeah, you guys. We'll yeah. get it together. Don't worry about it. Stick with us. us. Stay with us. <laughs> see how I, my, got my, see I, I got my phone up. You see, hey, you up? see how my up? you see how my podcast partner just threw me out. I put I put it on live so I could see what the comments are as we're talking. We got a we got six viewers right now. We're and, and thank you oh, for wow. joining us on a Sunday. This is we we figured Sunday would be the best time to to talk to you guys. You know, people don't want to hang out and watch shit on Saturdays. So um okay, so you so so, so, so I was gonna say like he I, I've never seen um. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of guys break. I, I don't know that I've I've seen I've seen that out of out of him at all. You've only been really rocked once. The the what was it? The second third fight, the Rayshon looking dude. Yeah, that my second fight, and then Nolan, that one guy. One guy hit me with a flying knee. Oh, that was at the oh very, wait wait up and hit me in the face. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then but that oh. luckily that was at the very end of the round. Yeah. So it was like the round went off and it was like he had a minute to recover. But that's what we talked about earlier. Yeah. Recovering is having that cardio. You recover a lot quicker. Somebody hits you with a flying knee to the face. <laughs> that I, I, did, I, I did drop him three times before that. In that see? Scene. Okay, yeah. there so, you go. They, so okay, okay. So, so mentally, even though like you got rocked at that moment, but mentally you knew you had already put him down a couple of times. So it didn't. I get that. I can see that where you just, okay, you got one shot in. Yeah. now. Uh, but I knocked you. Uh, I, I can see that. That... To me, is more the mental part of it, where you're just like, all right, you got a good look in because you do know you're fighting people that are qualified to fight, but it's that mental edge that you must have had at that point where you're just like, nah, I put him down three times already. You, I give you your one, but I'm still undefeated. <laughs> I got you. Okay. It's sometimes though, it's like you know, you get it, and then you got to get it back times two. Oh, uh, just real quick, uh, Leslie wants to know what uh, your eating plan before. What's your eating plan before fight? Man, well, for MMA, you know, we cut weight, same like boxing in most combat sports. So I actually have to lose about 14 pounds and then gain it all right back before I fight. So the day before, I need to weigh in at 135 pounds. And then the next day, I'm fighting again at 148 and a half or so. Oh, wow. That's what I weighed in as, uh, on the day of. That's so, a... so that stuff, like, it's not really things you want to do to lose weight because you're not losing it. You're losing water weight and water, you okay. gain all that water back. But just leading up to the fight, man, I'm eating clean. Most people, they always ask, oh, you know, what's your diet? So I'm going to try to copy it. But right. everybody's, everybody is different. Okay. So you well, really got to feel. Uh, what feel would you what, tell, what would you say? So what do you know for sure? That, okay. When a fight is about to, uh, when I'm about to fight the next day, what do you get out? <laughs> I'm about to have one of the most grossest thoughts. I'm like, I don't want to eat too much to where you get hit the <laughs> <laughs> you get hit the wrong way. You <laughs> like evacuate. Oh, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's happened before. I know that's happened. Wasn't it a video of a chick 
when she was she was fighting and she shit. Uh, Justine, I've seen, yeah, Justine, the uh, UFC, uh, she oh, shit herself on the choke out. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah, that happens. But but I think you know Jackie. The, the, by the way, the, says female MMA fighters are the best. <laughs> uh, yeah, she says they're the best. Go oh, ahead. Well, uh, all right. <laughs> now, um, I think that you know. But Jackie also rides for the females. Just so you don't take it personally. Bro. <laughs> she she she's just down for the ladies. But I think you know it's it is. Um, I mean the base the simple answer to that question is you know like this is saying every, everybody eats a little bit differently. The main thing is is you know you have to lose a certain amount of weight and you have to eat obviously the eating as healthy as possible. Right. But if someone's like actually wants to lose weight. The basic, most basic formula is calories in, cal calories out. Mm -hmm. And and people go, oh, don't you have to eat clean? Don't you have to? Yeah, all that stuff's good. But the bottom line is if you're watching your calories, you can't eat nothing but Snickers bars and feel good. Like right. you'll get you. So a, I can eat Snickers. No, yeah. I go just ahead, want to make sure I heard go you ahead say and that. eat 1500 calories with a Snickers <clears throat> Boom! And, and see how you feel in a week. That's, oh, sorry. But, <laughs> but you know, you the downside, I guess. you can't, you can't eat mounds of pasta and stay within your, right. within your calorie yeah. rate and, and also not be hungry an hour later okay. because of the way carbs work in your system. You have to eat some carbs. You have to eat co complex carbs. You have to eat proteins. You have to eat vegetables. You have to eat all that sort of stuff. But it's like, if you're just not going to go way into the science of it and just go, how do I lose weight? It's calories in, calories out, and exercise, boost your metabolism, build lean muscle mass so you burn more calories, and and eat a certain number. And you can do that by fasting one day a week, mm -hmm. fasting two days a week. You can Ooh. do intermittent fasting where you don't eat for 18 hours and you only eat during these hours. Or you can count your calories and eat 200 calories every hour for the and day, whatever you time, need to do, man, it works. Every time I think about fasting, like uh, that's when food smells the best. Yeah, like everywhere you go, like it's like it smells like everything smells better. Like you walk, you, you go past a Burger King, like you know Burger King is not the best thing, but even you're like you know what, maybe I should have a Whopper. <laughs> that's because you're in your brain, because that's what would be the that would be the hard part for me. Right, is is telling myself no, 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 you cannot eat this. Do not eat this right now. How long did it take you when you knew you were training to fight? How long did it take you to get past that part? Mm. Because you, how you're a young guy, right? You're younger than both. Twenty nine. Yeah. See, I'm old. I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I look, look younger. He's than actually forty two. You guys, uh, <laughs> just in the jeans. But how long did it take you to deal with that mental part yeah. of saying like, I want a burger, but I know I shouldn't have a burger. Now it's easy. Now it's easy that I'm a professional. We've been doing this for a while. But in the amateur days, it was a lot harder for me to do that. And it really took me until no, this great. one time I did a a three day water fast. And ever since then, I actually, all the weight cutting week and everything, like it's right. been a lot easier for me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, he, he also, though, he, there's a few guys, well, go ahead. What are you I got, I got to, because I'm, I'm trying to keep the, the audience here who's asking these questions. Jackie, by the way, who again, she's only asking these questions because she, she likes you <laughs> and she keeps, she's interested. So I love that. She says, uh, sex before fight. Yes or no? It's a big no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, read, Jackie. I, I read something <laughs> online once. I think it's true. Who knows? But supposedly your T, your testosterone goes up like if you, you haven't had sex or ejaculated for seven days. My girl's, uh, my fiance no, is going to vet school right now in the Caribbean. So actually, I haven't had sex for the past few months. <laughs> Although I will, I will dispel that myth. That's actually the exact opposite. Your testosterone goes up when the more you have sex. Wait, so wait a minute. Well, so wait, all right, so you're saying yeah. that you should not <laughs> yeah, have just, sex, before, I, but you're saying you should? Okay, here's the thing. That's an old myth. Um, that they used to say, old fighters used to say you lose your legs when you have sex. <laughs> I think I'm I think it's all bullshit, but the bottom line is that you're when they have actually done studies on that recently, like in the last two years, and they find that your testosterone goes up the more you have sex. So it's actually better to have sex. The problem is <clears throat> if you think it's worse for you to have sex, then it will it's be worse off for you mentally. Right. So oh, so do, you'll think so mentally you'll be like, oh man, the reason it, why I'm not it, ready is because I it's got it's like it's like those time. it's like those people who who don't like those baseball people who don't <laughs> change their fucking underwear when they're on a hitting streak or whatever. Yeah. It's like well, it's I guarantee, I guarantee dirty do. underwear doesn't make you hit better. But <laughs> if you think dirty underwear makes you hit better, then wear your fucking dirty underwear. Like I always tell people, I don't believe in superstition, but if you if you have a thing that you do before before you walk into the cage or before it. you just fucking do it. Yeah. Like I don't I, yeah. whether it's I'm not gonna sit here and go, that's bullshit. Yeah. Do it. Do what you think works. Yeah, I stopped drinking 30 days out from a fight just because oh. I know I can probably have a beer there and uh, right here and there and everything. But Leslie stopped. said, Leslie said you probably would Literally. whoop somebody's ass out of pure frustration from not <laughs> from not from not fucking. See now you know my tactics. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly. yeah. That's why he's six and old, people. Six no, but, and old. But it's it's um you know is going back to the to the food thing. He, uh, there's some people who have a real hard time with it. 
like weight cutting is is a science that, that most people still don't have figured out. Yeah. Like you always hear in the UFC they're like, oh, we need to change the weight cut to this or move it two days or make fight make weight make nobody cut weight and make your the weight you walk around and all these nonsense. And the real the reality of the situation is if you know what you're doing, and I mean I've been working on this shit for years, years yeah. and years and years. I started telling people to water load like ten years ago when everybody who who said nope wear a plastic suit and get the water out like two weeks in advance. And people are walking around dehydrated. Yeah. They used to do that. And old boxing coaches and wrestling coaches would have you lose all this water every day and all this kind of shit. And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. Drink more water, do whatever. People would say I was, I was crazy. Now the way I've been teaching people to with, you know, some variants and everybody's got a little bit different system for themselves, but the way I've been telling people to cut weight for like 10 years is now the norm. Now they have people who get paid tons of money just to teach you how to eat and right. cut weight. Mm -hmm. And they make your meals for you and all that. And they bring the water to your hotel room and you're and all this kind of stuff. Oh wow. But but he and a couple of the guys have have taken that and and then done their own research and done some <laughs> own stuff and, and made it to the to where he has it down like an Excel spreadsheet. Like he knows. Yeah day by day where his weight is going to be within a certain variance, how much water he's bringing in that day, what he's eating that day. So where he walks in, into the, into the sauna or into the bath or whatever he likes to do, drop the water. Sauna. To drop the water. At the end, the, no, I'm saying that's the easiest training I can do. There you go. <laughs> sauna. I'm sauna all day, bro. I can, you, you want me to just sit there and relax? I got you covered. And then drink water and I'll be right back. Boom. <laughs> I'm at my fighting weight. Yes. Uh, but so, he, you know, if you have the discipline in order to do it, it's not that hard. Right, right, right. The reason that people don't is because they don't have the discipline or they don't know what they're doing no. or they have some coaches telling them to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And But like I say, he he never misses weight. He rarely struggles. I mean, and I've got a couple of people at the gym that are that way. They they struggle a little bit. Of course, it's hard cutting all 10 pounds of water or whatever. But it's like, if you know how to do it and you're fully hydrated and you're in great shape, up, it's Frank? really not that hard yeah, to do. It's easy. Let me ask you this, because whenever I'm trying to get back into my my workout routine, I, I have to start with my mental, So which starts with music. So I put my little playlist together. I always tell people whenever I'm trying to get excited about the gym again, <laughs> I put a new playlist together. And mine varies. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of secret <laughs> about Ty Barnett's <laughs> playlist when he gets ready to work out. I start out with a little gospel. I know. Is that to do pull downs? <laughs> that's that's right. I just because I got I gotta I gotta I gotta bring it in and center myself. <laughs> and then I start with slow song like not slow songs, that'd be shitty <laughs> workouts. <of> slow <laughs> song. Some R and B. You know how it is. <laughs> Some eighties R and B, you know. No, but I like I build my list up because I know at certain parts of my workout, I know I'm gonna be at this point or this point or this point. So I put certain songs in my playlist at that point so I know it'll give me an extra boost. What do you do? Do you have a playlist when you train or do you, is he allowed to kind of, yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Before fights, you see me with my headphones yeah. on just in the back. You know, so who do you listen to? Before. Songs of the whale. No, no, like who, who gets, who gets you, who gets you going? Man, right now I got some, um, Lil Wayne, Carter five, of course. Okay. I got, I was listening to my man, Kendrick. What up, Pudge? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. And lately, a little bit of Drake. Usually, I hate Drake, but... Drake for some, working some, out? Some of the latest some of the latest stuff. He okay. got some bangers out there, so... I was going to say, man, how, how, how hard is Drake's music that you... That you... <laughs> it was like, Only man... some certain few of his okay. songs. He got okay. some good ones. Because I know, I know for me, like, there's certain songs where, honestly, like, I'll be... Like, I'll, it's, it's harder for me on the treadmill. Like, the treadmill is the harder thing for me. But if I'm lifting, it's, it's easy. I'm like, okay, I'm in, I'm in this mode. But, like, mentally running, I'm always like, I got to have something that says, hey, go, keep going, right. keep going, keep going. So I never, I remember I was working You get out. sounds of police. <laughs> <laughs> well, pull, it, pull him up. Woo! Oh, shit! <laughs> I, you know what's crazy is that, like, I, um, I made the mistake one day and I had my iPod, uh, like, it was on speaker. And uh, Rocky came. I had I have Rocky in my. Uh, yeah, so do I. My, 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 right. Yeah. And then I was sitting there thinking, man, I wonder how many people in this gym are looking at me like motivated or like, look at this cheesy <laughs> motherfucker here, really, <laughs> Rocky. That's it. But it is one of those go to songs. Like, and there's a certain part of the song like getting strong. Now, like, okay, good. I'm oh, good. I got it. I got it. So it's, have, it's so cheesy and stupid, but honestly, it if works. I, if I'm running and that song comes on. It works, I right? I can't stop running. It fucking works. That's right. Uh, Bill Conti, is that his name? <laughs> yeah. The fact that I know that should tell you how much I have this song in my iPod. Uh, it's, wait, oh, wait, oh, okay. So Jackie also, just so you know, Jackie uh, is really big into uh, what dudes do to get to the next level. Uh, so she asked, uh, so you don't masturbate at all before? <laughs> well, the, for a week. <laughs> uh, you Not hear that, Jackie? For Not week. for a week. 
He doesn't masturbate Other for than a that, week. I'm a guy. My girl's gone, so of course I'm. And he's in his 20s still. So, you know, come on, you got to get that out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't want him going Trump voter on a shit. Like, no, you, you know, got to keep, it, keep that energy going. <laughs> Sending bombs to people and shit. Oh, we my God. That. So, um, so what is your, what's your, your goal? What's, your, what's the ultimate thing for you? What's the, where, where do you see yourself going? Well, in fighting, it's to be the UFC champion. So UFC is, you know, it's the top of the top. It's like the NFL football. It's, it's where you want to be. Right. But I don't just want to be there. I want to dominate the guys there. I want to be at the top of that. So 35-pound champ, and that's going to be ha happening in 2022. That's what's up. See that? <laughs> Motivation. Motivation. See, I love – and I always say, like, the fact that you're undefeated, again, that has to be – help you – does that – okay, let me ask you this. As each fight comes up, does that help or hurt going into the next one because sometimes you might feel like all right man is this going to be the one or is are you just still riding that wave of nah nobody can fuck with me it's i mean it's a little bit of both like you always have to be cautious in the back of your head like man i'm protecting something you know if i get that loss then that's not just a regular loss on right. another person's record like having that o in the l column that's big it's yeah, yeah big for the promoters and the guys who want to bring you into the ufc so i got to keep that keep but it. you know pressure is a privilege I work yeah. this hard to keep that up. That's right. So it's for me, it's just it's fun and it's exciting to go out there and defend it. I love it. When here's here's the other thing too that that <clears throat> he had he had five amateur fights. His very first fight he lost, mm. so he's on a ten fight win streak. Oh shit! But that first fight was a lot. Now a lot of times when people have never lost, like you know he hasn't lost as a pro, which is all that really matters. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times mentally, what happens is people go ten and 0, 12 and 0, 14 and 0, and they lose. And they don't. They didn't know they could lose. Mm -hmm. Their brain is brain's a weird fucking thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, losing becomes a habit, and uh. or, or, or losing becomes or winning becomes. Oh no, I guess I wasn't as good as I. And this weird doubt comes yeah. in sometimes. And sometimes somebody loses somewhere in the middle of their career, and then after that, it's like they don't lose again. That's right. what they. And I kind of feel like, you know, with that first fight. I kind of feel like he got that out of the way early. Yeah, yeah. Get and that now, defeat and, out the way. Yeah, I get and, that. And, and now it's not like, yeah, he's undefeated and 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 on and and as a pro, and that's huge. But I feel like there's less like it's not like he's never been there. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it, it didn't end his world. Oh, yeah. And it's not and that he's got this pressure to to remain that, but it's not the same pressure as somebody who, <clears throat> you know, we have another guy in our gym, um, Taco, who was Six and zero is he fought as a kid like what they call pancreas. You, it's a little di bit different. You can't you can't punch a certain way or whatever. Then he was seven and zero as an amateur, and then he was like seven and zero as a pro. So at one point he was basically twenty two and zero, oh, and he shit. was twenty years old at the time. Oh damn! Then he lost, and it was like six months we didn't see him, and he was just yeah. Like that, that must have been like how how it must have been for Ronda Rousey because everybody was kind of surprised when she lost. Everybody was like, oh shit. Uh, yeah, that can happen, and I think mentally it fucked with her. So two things before I forget. Before I forget, what's your cheat meal? Me, yeah. pizza, pizza, pizza. Uh, which is always come on, who that's pizza and beer, pizza and yeah. beer. Oh, Simple. Two of the worst cheat meals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I'm pretty sure she's joking when she asks me this, but uh, are steroids still popular? <laughs> Look, see? <clears throat> nah, actually, in the UFC, they have uh, you saw that they brought you saw that it's this drug testing agency. And they can test you pretty much whenever, like you're you're tracked by them. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you're in con if you're under contract, they can knock on your door anytime yeah. during your contract. What up, Johnny? It's my boy Tarion, who's in the UFC, uh, like they would come and just test him at like six in the morning. They just show up at his house, pounding on. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So they, they even out of competition, everyone. Yeah. Wait a minute. Even if you're not competing, they just show up at your crib. Yeah. As, it, long, it, as long as you're under contract with yeah, the UFC, the they can check you anytime you want. God damn. <clears throat> and 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 there's stuff on there that's not illegal, but it's banned. So. Like poppy seeds, right? Yeah, well, not, I, I don't think specifically poppy seeds, but there are things like supplements and things that um, horse tranquilizers. You, yeah, <laughs> no, no, the, you know there there are things I'm in like there are stuff. things like like in um there are certain things in certain drugs like Viagra, Cialis, certain uh, those kind of things that what's Viagra? Viagra? Oh, yeah, I never heard of it. <laughs> uh, they, <clears throat> two more years. Um, and then uh, <laughs> they they. That metabolize that create the same metabolites mm -hmm. that because that's how they test you for drugs that you've taken that you don't that are not in your system. Like cocaine's out of your system in like a day or two, but the metabolite stays in your system for longer. So if that metabolite's there, cocaine's then, out of your system after a day or two. Yes, quick. Yeah. 
Weed is weed is like two weeks to a month, depending on what you do to get it out of your system. Some people you can get it out within a week if you know what you're doing. Can you smoke weed if you in the? Yes, but the levels are out of competition. You, you they can test you for a higher level in competition, which is eight weeks before a scheduled fight. It's it's lower, but you can still do it. And I don't know how low it is. Or in competition. Do you know? And you don't have like, to. You don't have to give me the day of. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, pop. See, that, that, that actually was gonna be my next question. So you do know people who who take a hit or two before they fight? Because I would think that me personally, the DS if I'm gonna fight many times, yeah. I would say if I'm gonna fight somebody, <clears throat> I'm probably gonna have to be high <laughs> or at least buzz. Like I cool. can't go straight into this knowing I got it. I need a little bit of a buffer. It's gonna make you a little slower oh. though. Depends on the weed. I know bro. Some, some like you Nick, get that, Nick. You get that sativa. <clears throat> Nick Diaz is known for it, and and back before it was um before it was uh illegal, he what fought and won, le- and and beat a guy, and they tested him, and his levels were so high that the commentator okay. said, "You must have been." He goes, "What were you like?" Like he goes, "You must they must you must have been doing bong rips in the fucking in the." <laughs> In the in the, uh, in the dressing room, room. in the locker room, he, sh- he shows up to the way in no, holding and, the yeah, bong. No, no, and this is what he said. He goes, "No, I ate it." Hilarious. So, like in Jeez. the locker room. Oh, he ate. The, oh, it's a whatever. It was. So he, they said and, his levels were so high after the fight when he fought Gomi, and he won. But he, like, but you could do it after the fight. After the fight's fine, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, cool. and, that, and that was back when it was completely illegal. Now and he was now also sponsored by Snoop. Just so you guys know. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Okay. Uh, Leslie wants to know. So if you test positive. How long before you can fight again? And it, wait, wait, t- uh, test positive for because apparently weed you can you can blaze up. It depends on what it is. Yeah, I- anything anything is um in the UFC the first offense is a year. It's like six months six or months a, year, a year, and then it's two years yeah. for your and second then five offense. Five years for the third offense. Yeah, so you're like pretty much done, career over. Yeah, because nobody's you know it's yeah. not worth it's not worth all that. It was like I'm gonna get your ass when I'm 52, although, bro. Although I although I, I kind of think a little I think they should change the rules a little bit because. If you get busted for weed or cocaine or something like that, not really a performance enhancing drug in my opinion. You know, yeah. I, mean, I think I isn't coke or, though? Coke would be right. Well, I think for that they only test in competition for. Okay. Like they're not testing you for the whole gamut of drugs when you're out of competition. Because every for, every like, movie I see, dude. And answers. But but that's what I'm saying. Like every movie I see, you ever see? Like you notice the dude takes a a, a huge snort and he's like. <laughs> Right. So I would think that it would be like a like if it, if it, there's any time you're gonna fight and not feel it. Right. Right. Is the coke? I'm not. I'm not endorsing this at all, people. I just so you guys know. Well, and, and meth is good because then you don't need a Hilarious. mouthpiece. Hilarious. Because you just got no teeth left. It's <laughs> like, what are you gonna do to me? Uh, no. Oh, my MMA Tyrone the Terror. Uh, no, I don't use Tyrone anymore right now, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie's one of the few people that knows. I have a ridge. I, there's a headshot floating around. Well, I remember and, that headshot. Yeah, that. And it's the only time I went by just Tyrone. That's all it was. And people would look at the picture and they're like, "You don't look like a Tyrone." <laughs> and so I changed it to Ty, and now it it helps when when I go to, to get work. Um, okay, so all right. So it, it, when you, when when we're talking about like taking that loss or anything like that, have you like do you watch? how people do take those just to kind of prepare. I'm not saying for you, but I'm saying like, do you study every facet of this? Like mentally, I would want to talk to somebody like a Ronda Rousey who lost after being like at the tippy tippy top, just to figure out what was going through her mind or anything like that. Anderson Silva is not, but like, I mean, that Anderson mm-hmm. Silva, like I remember seeing the picture of him fucking break his, ah, oh, that shit still fucks with me. Like, how, do you ever like, because we're students of comedy. So Ian and I, like, we we talk to other comedians. And when we were coming up, we talked to other comedians. Do you talk to these vets and pick their brains to kind of get yourself more mentally prepared for these things? I would say it's less a, of talking to them and watching them, but more so of, of being a student of, of mentality. Right. Having the right mindset. So already, like, I mean, we lose every single day. And we lose in, in business ventures, in our own lives. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the cage. Right. So I know that, you know, if a loss comes, when it does, I'll be able to handle it just like how I handle losses and everything else. So it's really just a matter of putting things back into perspective. Okay. And then working hard to, to come back. That's fair. That's all it is with, with any type of loss you take. Because, I mean, I can tell you, man, uh, what you do, even what Ian does, like, I, I, I don't, I don't, understand. I get that you guys can do it. I can't. So I'm always in sure. awe of cats like you guys that, that, go out there and put your body out there like that. Cause 
you know, my thing was always basketball. Like, I'm like, I'm going to go play. Like, I haven't played. I haven't told you this. I haven't played in years because in my mind, I'm like, man, mentally, I think I can still do it. But physically, I know I don't want to take that chance. Plus, as an actor, you're like, I don't want to fuck up any of this. <laughs> right. Any of this, right? The moneymaker. That's right. That's <laughs> right. All is all up in here. That's why I, play, I actually used to play at the uh, the L.A. Fitness over in Hollywood. I used to play at two different gyms. There was one on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, where all the thugs went, all the thuggy motherfuckers went, and if they they just came to fight. Like that's all that's, <laughs> you can tell. They not there to hoop at all. So then everybody was like, "Man, let's go to the other gym." And we went to the other one over by Universal Studios, and that one was where all the actors went. Yeah. yeah. So whenever when someone called a foul, they was like, "Okay, cool, you got it, you got it," because nobody want to fuck up this. Right. Nobody want to fuck up the, the the face. So and so for you, knowing that MMA is as huge as it is now. And that you can get endorsements and all of this stuff out of that. Do you? What precautions do you take? Because I mean, you're young, you're a good looking cat. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty Thanks, sure man. you can you can get endorsement deals and shit, right? Do you take all that? Because you got you know you got a little shiner there, but again, you're still undefeated. So it's like part of you, part of me feels like you want to keep going because this will take you to the next level. Do you have aspirations beyond this that are in entertainment, or is it you know? Um, not necessarily in entertainment, but for me more so, you know, I love, I love reading. I love writing, love just understanding psychology and stuff. So for me, like I I found this connection to being an athlete and sort of like in the Joseph Campbell type of hero's journey type of thing, you know, athletes as a whole, they go through this great journey, but once you're done with your sport, it spits you out. And most of these guys who are in the NFL, in the NBA, burn through all their cash and then they Uh get out. Like, what can I do with my life now? Right. Yeah. Happens to pretty much every single athlete yeah. at one point. Like for me in college, when I played soccer, I stopped playing soccer. I was like, man, what am I going to do with my life? And then I found fighting and started competing again. But I think the lessons you learn being an athlete, going through that whole journey, Micah? I think that you can learn from that and apply it to your regular life. And then when the time comes where you do need to retire, it's okay, I can give you back can now okay. or go through that same journey again, just in a different industry. Right. See, they I think expressing sounds that sounds so calming when he says it. I love that. <laughs> I like, like it, it's, it's not, like, and I love that, that you have that mentality towards it where it's just like, well, no, you just prepare yourself here and then you can move on to the next level and do this. Because that is what a lot of people, especially if you're an athlete, if you're an athlete and you're putting yourself out there as an athlete, it's hard. It, it has to be hard to make that transition into I'm no longer an athlete. What, what, what I don't get, though, is that <clears throat> I see this a lot. I, haven't, I guess I've seen it with some MMA fighters, although it hasn't been a sport long enough to really see this. But I see it with basketball players and football players all the freaking time is you're an athlete. I got you, Leslie. You do this for a living. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm old and I, I do it because I enjoy doing it. And I never fought professionally like, like he did. I mean, when I was, when I was his age, it wasn't even really a, an option. Like there was, there was no weight class at the time. You know what I mean? Like it was nothing. What am I? I'm going to fight a 250 pound dude. Yeah. No. Was it like uh, a? Was it no um, gloves? Rocky, <clears throat> Rocky when he's fighting Thunderlips. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> Catch me! <laughs> uh, but, but, but I, I, I think I can't, I can't ever imagine not doing this. Like I mean, I've got, I've got like problems. Like I'm trying, I've got, can't even stand up with, uh, with my back, and I'm still doing jujitsu. Yeah. And it's like, what am I I'm going? Ow. Ow, ow, while he's I'm holding there. pads for me, limping around. Yeah. Oh my god! But no. the thing is, I look at these guys like Shaq, and it's like, or any of these guys, and you're like, oh, so I see you still eat nine thousand calories a day, but do you not do any no. exercise but look, ever but look again at those, in your life? They look at like those players, pounds. though. It's insane. Look at those players, and like, if, especially Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale is one of them. Like, if you if you did you you see the camera and it's just on their waist up, they right. wearing a suit. But if you pull back, they're all wearing these shoes. That are just like straight arch support. That's all they wear. Yeah. They only they're hideous looking shoes, but they're <laughs> like, hey man, I gotta. And then when they're walking, you can see their knees are all jacked. Let me. I gotta ask this question for Leslie. Thank you for sticking around, Leslie. I know it hasn't been uh, easy, uh, but because we're we're talking, we're all over the place. But uh, Leslie wants to know uh, when you throw your first punch, what's normally going through your mind uh, when it doesn't instantly sting your opponent or like knock them off their off the off their square. It's just keeping to the plan. I mean, you got to know going in, not every single punch is going to work. Not every single opportunity is going to pan out the way you want it to. But for me, it's like getting into that zone, getting into that flow state. So when the first punch doesn't land or doesn't hurt him or doesn't knock him down, I'm just flowing anyways. I'm not thinking so much. I don't know if, you know, when you're shooting and and you're in the zone and you're making all your shots, you're not really thinking about anything. You're pretty emotionless. So that's kind of how 
I try to be in there. And when I am like that, that's when the fights work out the best for me. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Now, where, where are we at time wise? We're like 10? Okay. Well, you got to go probably pretty soon anyway. So we'll go like five more minutes and we'll do a, yeah. then we'll do the little, uh, little end thingy that we do. Um, so, um, yeah. So, I mean, where, where do you think, I think um, the next thing, I mean, the, the, the big thing I, I, f- I feel like is going into, um, you know, what, what's next. The hardest thing I have to say with, with him that this last fight, I was not super stoked about because he had a different opponent who uh, had some sort of um, injury. Uh, and Oh, and, you know, come on. We got to know. what. what no, on. we don't know. We have no idea. He just pulled out of his fight. Like, uh-huh. And this other guy that he, was, that he ended up fighting was already training for a fight. Now, the guy he ended up fighting, his record doesn't, like, he was eight and four. Now, a lot of people look at that and go, oh, that, okay, he's eight and four, but his four losses were all decision losses to really good guys, including... Two guys that one guy that's that's on our team that that was in, made to the UFC and another guy who uh, he trained with Bellator. sometimes who is a beast a mm-hmm. monster a, a fighter and neither one of those guys could finish this dude this dude's a black belt in jujitsu I think he's a black belt in judo or, or something as well known for really heavy hands for his weight class and they spring this guy on us in like two and a half weeks out two weeks out oh wow and it's like well that's our option and he's ready to fight he's like and you know. You can't tell a you can't ask a fighter, oh, 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 are you cool to fight this guy? Because the answer is always yes. Yeah. And if the answer is not yes, uh, on some on some level, as a coach, you want you want the answer to be like, no, nah, I'm gonna hold off because that means you don't have to do the work. Yeah. But the an- but you'd never want that because that means you don't that, want nobody to be like, ah, no, yeah, yeah. You, you always want a fighter that's like, who is it, Godzilla? All right, whatever. Let's go. Right. Yeah. And every, Debo. Every fighter's gonna. Goddamn do that. right, I'll fight Debo. <laughs> but it's hard as a coach because sometimes sometimes you go. This isn't a good fight for where we're at right now. Not because you're going to lose, not because of whatever, but because maybe style-wise doesn't match up. Maybe, oh, you know, this guy's going to just just do whatever he can, and it's going to be a decision, and decisions in MMA are notoriously rough. Like, you never, it might not go your way, even when you think you win. Right. And he's at a situation now where it's like, the UFC loves that zero. They love that right. zero. Right, and that's why they, they don't even care necessarily who you fought, because they don't look and go, Oh, they he, just oh, love to see the he's, he's eight and one. Let me see who he fought. Oh, that guy's great. Oh, that guy's great. They go ten and zero, and he's like, yeah, he fought. He fought ten Girl okay. Scouts. Well, they don't <laughs> fucking care. They just go ten and zero. So it's a weird. Which, balance. just so you guys know, four of his fights were we're against Girl Scouts. Scouts. Yes. Yeah, so, so, okay. yeah. so, so anyway, that. we get we get this dude. We get this dude a couple weeks out, and it's like, this is who you're fighting. You're fighting this guy, or or you're not fighting. And it's like, okay, and we're looking at it going, damn, this guy is really freaking good. Right. Really tough everywhere different fight than we were preparing for on some level. I mean, you're always right. preparing. So it was like, it's a tough one. Cause so now it's like, so everybody he's, he's fought has been good. Yeah. I mean, it has we, a decent we chose record. that path to fight really tough guys because again, I'm not trying to just make right. it. I'm trying to show that I can yeah. dominate at right. that level. There you go. But it's hard now because now we're at a point with like, who's next, you know, the net, the next people we get, I mean, it's going to keep, no one's going to want to, it's hard when you're on six and oh, and the, and people the people gunning you, for you. The people that you fought are, you know, he, he's not. Again, he's never gonna have another easy fight. No, no, they're gunning for you. Not that he's ever had an easy fight, but he's if the, if he did, there's never gonna be an easy fight from here on out. Let me tell you. And, and again, I always people hate that I do this, and, and I know what I'm doing. I am comparing video games to what you guys are doing, so <laughs> I'm putting it out there, everybody. I got it. But anyway, the game that I play, I'm not gonna tell you because I just found out that I'm globally hated. In this video game, like seriously, like people are cussing me out in languages I don't even fucking know. But because I am you're good, or because you suck, or because you talk. No, shit? I'm awesome. That's why they cuss me out. Okay. They don't cuss out the weak motherfuckers. They okay. never do. They okay. never talk shit about the garbage people ever. <laughs> it's only only the people that are good. But I I realized something that the higher because you get these points, the higher you go. And it's a combat game, right? And the higher you go in the, in the thing, the worse your teams are. Like you, you, you end up having to carry carry three or four motherfuckers that can't play. Yeah. But I noticed something: the more the numbers go up, every time someone is talking shit about me, they never talk about the guy on my team that's one for eight. They never fucking say anything. Yeah. So the fact that you have that zero, and, and the more you add to it, and you don't add to the zero, people are going to be gunning for you. So you have to get, you know, as he was saying, like you have to get prepared for no more easy fights. Mm-hmm. So do you? 
now do you say, okay, now I got to amp up this part of my training. Now I got to amp up this part of my diet. Do you do that with each each time now? I mean, right now we're already training hey, at the Mary, level how you where doing? we don't need to worry about about any of that. Because yeah, he's already doing I'm not, it. Yeah, I'm already doing it. I'm not trying to. I'm not going to be fixing anything once I make it to the UFC. We're going to be doing exactly the same stuff because we're already pushing so hard. Right. I just know the stakes are going to be a little bit higher. But again, like. To be great, you got to take risks like that. So. That's true. And, and also, the, the big thing that we always talk about is so many people get there. And I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of building. You know, you start a little easier and you build your way up. And, and when you get, by the time you get there, you've you got to be fighting those tough guys. He's had a little harder that he started pretty hard from the beginning. But the good thing is when you get there, the hardest part about the hardest part isn't getting to the UFC. The hardest part is staying in the UFC. Right. Because sometimes two losses, you're cut. Especially right now, they're, they may really? be getting... That, that harsh? Oh, yeah. Especially like two in a row. If you like lose two in a hey. row, depending on how you lose. and I mean, if it's a fight of the night, if you go out and get your ass kicked two twice in a row, they'll just drop you. Especially because there's so many people... Wait a minute, wait a minute. In. If you... Twice in a row, they don't even give you time to build up from that? Like, what if you... It, like, it depends on how much they like you, if they're trying to build you. How marketable you are. How marketable okay. you are. And how good those fights are. You go out there um, and you fight two crazy battles and you lose two split decisions... They probably won't cut you. You go out there and get choked out in the first round twice. They, they'll probably <laughs> or shit you. yourself in the first thirty yes, seconds. Exactly. They're like, ah, this well, is probably, no, that's that's marketable. This is probably not for you. <laughs> 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 this is probably not for you. You shit yourself twice, and the bill didn't even start. But uh, but so so the good thing is that when he when he does get there, staying there is going to be easier, right? Because it's not like you get there and all of a sudden you know they always go, oh, the competition went up. No, not really. No, because you started yeah. from there. You started from <laughs> we're, having we're competition. Fight, we're fighting that competition now, so so it's like get there and it's going to be like you know okay, this is another day, yeah. another another day. So man, I got to tell you, dude, I uh, Ian's had uh, a few, a couple people on from from uh, from his fight from the fighting his fighting um, world, and this has actually been one of the most enlightening conversations because I really did want to know like how do you. Because, again, I can't wrap my brain around, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have anger issues sometimes, but I, I in my mind, I'm never like, man, I can't wait to punch this motherfucker in the face. <laughs> but it is interesting to see. And plus, you seem like like a very calm, chill dude. I'm a nice guy, man. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a nice guy until we get in the ring, and I'm undefeated, bitches. I am undefeated for a reason. So it, it was actually cool to talk to you and kind of get uh, some insight to where, you know, how you prepare and how you approach the ring and outside the ring. Because to me, sometimes that's one of the more important things. Because again, everyone's time and whatever they're doing is limited. I don't give a fuck what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is limited. So you seem like you got a pretty good head on your shoulders and you you have these goals, but you're also very realistic in what you want to accomplish and what is, is more important. Because sometimes people they put that over everything else. And then when they lose, that's why I kind of think that's what happened to Ronda Rousey a little bit because she was so hyped up. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything from her. I'm not going to talk shit about her because she probably still kicking my ass <laughs> or something. But I think she was so caught up in that and that hype that I don't think she prepared herself to not be good like that. So I think that the fact that you're learning from these people and, and you still have that humility about you, I think it's going to serve you way better yeah man so. thank you that's i mean i learned from this guy learned from the yeah. best so this motherfucker yeah. really humility? humility huh come <laughs> on man really the the guy that wears his belt around no, <laughs> okay um now nah, man uh i i don't oh tell people how, how to find you we, we only got two viewers but that's okay we, we <laughs> no but this is but this one. but this also that's just a live thing this keep you gonna keep forgetting this shit still goes out to the podcast I, well, I'm sorry, the Wednesday. Facebook. The, that's right. The Facebook, yes, Facebook people, we only have a couple people, yeah. but out there we got about a million. Yeah. Uh, so tell these million, millions of people out here where they can find you and how to stay in touch with you and, and follow your career. Because I, I honestly, I see good things for you, bro, because not just because, like I said, you're skilled, but because you have a good head on your shoulders about what this world is. Thank you, Ty. I appreciate that. Man, yeah, you guys can, uh, can find me at Vince the Anomaly. On Twitter, Instagram, all the major social media stuff, just Vince Anomaly. Check out my website too. I do uh, photography, videography, oh. ma mainly combat sports yeah, stuff, good. but uh, Vince Cachero or VinceTheAnomaly.com too. Dope. Hey, Allison. And we got Allison there too. All right. Yeah, and seriously, if you, if you haven't, if you, everyone, everyone knows about the UFC who's a casual fight fan. A lot of people who are a little more fight fans, you might know, you know, the casual fan probably knows Bellator. 
Definitely knows the I've UFC. Heard of Bellator. The the and the, Belladonna. The the, the, <laughs> the the slightly less fan might know <laughs> some of the smaller shows or the so the LFA is the official feeder show to the to the UFC. Every champion that's ever been in LFA, it used to be RFA in in Legacy Fighting champ, uh, Championships. They they merged together to create LFA. Every champion has and some who aren't champions have gone on to the UFC. So Access TV, most cable uh, company uh, companies have it every Friday night. Access TV has fights, MMA fights, and most of the time it's LFA or CES, which is back east. Um, watch them. If you're, if you're even a remotely casual him. fan, he will probably be fighting for the title soon, at least if not the next fight, one more fight, and then he'll be fighting for the LFA title. I guarantee it. Uh, but LFA, it's all the people you're going to see in the future. All, you know, the, the, That's right. Terry on Ware, the guy we had before, we had, there's a, um, who recently went in, Sean O'Malley, um, I mean, there's a every person you can think of these new up and comers, people in the in the UFC, um, uh, Curtis Melender. These all, people all came from from LFA. Watch those if you're a fa casual fan uh, of of UFC. Go and watch LFA um, Friday nights uh, on uh, on on Access TV. You'll see Vince. You'll see a bunch of other people that you're gonna that will be future stars, and you'll know them back when they were starting out. So so uh, you know, don't just be a fan of. Don't just be a fan of the UFC. Be a fan of MMA. That's right. Be a fan of people kicking each other's asses. That's right. That's right. Legally, Absolutely. within reason. <laughs> so do we want to? Uh, so that so that we're gonna we're gonna end our our regular tent, and then we will do our our little last minute Ian, ten, ten minute thing. Ian's gonna explain to you what's about to happen right now. Uh, thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Oh, and just before we, uh, well, do we tell people where to find us? Shit, or we're gonna wait because we should yeah, find, find, well, find us. Of course, go on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you're already listening. But subscribe like please rate us and That's give right. us a review because that helps us get more people again do not say mean shit yes. if you don't like the podcast your opinion doesn't matter yourself. that's right <laughs> uh but if you do like it please write in yes yeah uh um, go ahead go ahead yeah and and then you know um comedian ty barnett comedian ty barnett.com uh I, it used to be dot net. It was some. It was some weird. Dot it was, edu. Some, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, comedian ty barnett dot com. Uh, Facebook is comedian ty barnett. Uh, the Twitter is t barnett twenty three, and the Instagram is ty barnett uh, twenty three. Something like that. Hey, so, Ian Harris comedian dot com. Everything is at comedioker. Yes, plays just with like words. that's right. See comedy that? mediocre. Wordplay. Get know. a dictionary, people.